Welcome back to uh, lecture two, part two, pancreatic organ systems. We were talking about pancreatitis, and I cut you off a little bit because someone walked in. So we'll start kind of over here about uh, talking about inflammation of the gallbladder, which is called cholecystitis. It almost always occurs in associated with gallstones, and it's one of the most common reasons for abdominal surgery, actually. Probably not, although probably not the most politically correct saying, I learned the causes of cholecystitis as the four F's, uh, female, fat, fertile, and 40. Hey, it helps me remember it. Since the gallbladder is right under the liver, it makes sense that the pain from an inflamed gallbladder would be in the upper right quadrant of the abdominal region. A little less obvious is that it refers um, as in referred pain um, to the right lower portion of the shoulder blade. Again, since it's an itis, we can almost automatically add fever and chills into the signs and symptoms list. And since the gallbladder is involved with enzymes and bile going into the liver, our poison filter, it makes sense that we'd see nausea and vomiting. As you can see from the slide, uh, we'll get a positive Murphy's sign with cholecystitis. What is a Murphy sign, you ask? Glad you asked. Basically, you stand in front of the patient and hook your fingers under their rib cage on the patient's right side, where the liver is. Then, you ask them to take a deep breath and see if they scream. Yeah, I know, kind of barbaric, but there you have it. If their gallbladder is inflamed, it'll be, quote, uncomfortable, as we say. Of course, an abdominal ultrasound, or CT, are good for seeing an inflamed gallbladder too, but they cost money. Um, as far as our differential diagnosis goes, pancreatitis would be a suspect, so we need to make sure to check amylase and lipase levels, our pancreatic enzymes. Continuing on with the same subject, we're now going to take a closer look at gallstones or cholelithiasis. Actually, they're also associated with pancreatitis. Um, do you remember how often they're associated with pancreatitis? 35 to 60% of the cases of pancreatitis? Anyway, gallstones are just a bunch of hardened cholesterol and or calcium deposits that get stuck in the gallbladder. When they try to pass um, out through the ducts, sometimes they get stuck as shown in this picture. Okay. <clears throat> uh, if that was enough here, you have another drawing from obstruction of gallstones. Um, notice how this inflammation of the gallbladder also causes, it's this inflammation of the gallbladder wall that causes uh, itching or pruritus, is what we call it. So we're probably all familiar with appendicitis, right? Well, let's see. Did you know that appendicitis is the most common acute cause of abdominal surgery? Oh, by the way, if I haven't mentioned it before, acute means that it's happening fast. It's contrasted with chronic or disease that comes on slowly. Actually, you probably did know about acute pancreatic appendicitis, or at least you could have guessed it, right? Did you also know about um, that 20 to 25 percent of appendixes removed are not actually infected. Uh, yeah, it's true. The problem with appendicitis is um, that there are so many other things that it could be, but not taking out the appendix and letting it burst is taking a really big risk, so a quarter of them are removed even when they didn't need to be. An inflamed appendix, like 50 percent of the 50 to 80 percent of the time is due to is due to an obstruction, usually a fecal lift, a hard ball of compacted feces, or less commonly a gallstone tumor or even a bunch of worms. Appendicitis, at least acute appendicitis, usually affects young adults or teens, but it can happen at any age. 
is a classic presentation of appendicitis. First, there's pain that starts around the belly button and makes its way to the right lower abdominal quadrant. Next, there's nausea and vomiting, followed by tenderness over the appendix. After that, a fever follows, and then you'll see the white blood cells shoot up. Unfortunately, more often than not, it doesn't present in this classical pattern. The patient does get the pain, nausea and vomiting, but then may not have any tenderness over the appendix, or the tenderness may even manifest at a completely different location. That's why it's so hard to be sure of appendicitis. An abdominal CT should find it though. Not so much with an ultrasound, it's only about half right, or right half the time, but since appendicitis may not be the problem, the ultrasound is a good choice in women because an ovary might be the problem and it's simple to just move the wand over a bit and check those while we're at it. We might be able to see a fecalith on an x-ray. Hey, you never know and it's cheap. Uh, currently, uh, surgery is a treatment of choice because we can get away with it with very little invasive, ev invasive evidence afterward. Taking out an appendix. Look at this picture here. More pictures of an appendicitis there. Okay. Actually, let me stop right there before we talk about peritonitis.